Hey, hey, podcast listeners. Welcome to What You're Reading, the podcast where I connect with fellow book enthusiasts to chat about our latest reads, the topics that fuel our book obsession, and all the things that keep us glued to those pages. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we are talking about reading books that kind of evoke strong emotions, reading books that either make us emotional, you know, in a good or bad way. And then we're going to end out the rest of the episode talking about a specific book called All the Lonely People by Mike Gale, because I've, I haven't seen a lot of people talk talk about this book. And so that's why I specifically wanted to invite our guest on today, Brianna, because I saw you, I believe, post about it or talk or review about it. And I got so excited because, again, I haven't seen anyone talk about this book. I haven't had really an opportunity to chat about this book with anyone. So I'm really excited to get into that in the latter half of the episode. But before we get started, I want you to come on, say hello to the people and kind of tell us a little bit about your reading journey? Have you always been a reader? Uh, Were you a reader? You took a break and now you're back to reading. Tell us a little bit of what that looks like. Okay, so from a very young age, me and my mom used to go to the library and I would read her books. And from there, it just flourished a relationship with reading where I was then going out on my own when I was 13, 12 years old, um, going to the library to go to the Homework Health Center Best of both worlds with that, reading and meeting my friends that I now cherish those relationships as well throughout life. When I went, when I got to college, that's when my reading slowed down and I picked it back up in my last years of finishing up my degree to where I created a bookstagram as well. And I ended up being here, being the reader I am. Yes, love it. And then can you give us a little bit more um, info on your bookstagram? What kind of content do you like to share? What kind of books? Um, and like, how long have you how long have you had your account? So I've had it for one and a half years. I'm going on to. Um, so for as far as my content, I basically make pictures and graphics right now. I'm not really into the real space. Sometimes you might see me pop out with a reel, but that's not my jam. <laughs> um, editing is very tiresome. Yeah. So I really do wish that I could make that aesthetic, you know, cut really choppy videos maybe soon, maybe in the soon future. But right now it's just graphics and pictures that I think are pleasurable to the eye. So I try to make my content palatable to where a lot of people can get use out of it, be able to save it, where they look to it for later, whether that's doing an anticipated reads post or currently reading post. Um, I'm always trying to advocate for the reading being a pleasurable experience. I feel like when we were growing, when I was growing up, a lot of people saw reading as a punishment and I never did. So I was always that one kid like, oh yeah, sure, the books suck. I'm loving that shit. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Oh, I don't want to read over the summer. Yes, I do. I totally get that. Absolutely. It's it's a different, you know, now as adults, it's it's a little bit different. And I don't even know, maybe now for kids, I don't have kids, but my nieces are like pretty big readers. And it seems mm-hmm. like like there isn't like that I guess stigma of like if reading isn't cool at least for them or maybe it's just with their friend group because they're they're always talking books so I'm glad to see that hopefully things have changed so tell us a little bit more about like your reading tastes what's maybe some of the last books you finished whether you like them or or not um so as far as the last books I finished I think I did Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah, I think that's her last name, and then Not So Perfect Stranger. So I'm really, this month I'm in a thriller kind of mood based on those pictures. I don't know where that came from. My favorite genre genre is historical fiction, Mm. actually. So when I get too much in that bag, I'm like, I got to venture out. You know, everybody don't want to, you know, they don't want to talk about slavery. They don't want to talk about all this and that. Let me, let me get into the thriller bag. Let me get tie into the romance or YA let me try some of that let me give historical fiction a break so that's basically what this month is like just I'm trying to read translated works poetry trying to venture out and see what else I like not just historical fiction romance thriller those 
regular genres we see a lot on um, social media. Right, right. Venturing out, how does that feel like... I feel like sometimes people, myself included, can get a little intimidated because it feels like it's just different. And it's kind of like, you know, like I'm, I'm a heavy romance reader. So I kind of know going in like, oh, I'm going to get these cozy, warm vibes and it's good, just going to be so lovely. But sometimes going into and I'm trying to get more into like mystery thriller because that's not a big one that I'm into. I feel like it takes me a minute to find footing about like, how is this? supposed to go or is it supposed to start off this slow or I just you know within a couple of first chapters I've been introduced to 20 people like is this normal or is this the book like how do you kind of find your footing when you're trying to explore other genres so I kind of like approach it with an open mind first and obviously that's not like cut and dry <laughs> I'm not gonna go into this and be like yeah <laughs> So what I do, open mind, and then I'll say, okay, we need a, what are we thinking about right now? What book did we just read that we're thinking, oh, that needs to be given the same vibe over here. Take it out, take that out your mind, and then just let that book speak for itself. So I think that's very important. As readers trying to venture out, you have to take whatever that genre is giving you, and then you, you think your thoughts after that. Okay. I think knowing, also doing some discernment, like mm. kind of reading the synopsis, maybe seeing what other people thought about the book that you trust, mm -hmm. um, who share similar feelings mm -hmm. towards the book. Like if they say there's multiple POVs and you know you don't like no multiple POVs, right. put the book down. That is a good point. That's a great point. So what are you, are there books that you're reading? Like currently, is there a book like you're currently working through or hoping to pick up next within these last, within these next like couple of days? I am reading three books right now. I was supposed to be retiring the multi book reader person in me, but I don't, How? I don't think that's happening. God, that's so hard. <laughs> I feel like with the thoughts in my head, plus the books I'm reading, there's just always something going to be going on. So it really doesn't matter. I can keep the storylines. I've been doing it for a while. I'll even do like different formats. The book will be an audio, ebook, physical, 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 audio, or ebook, ebook, audio. It'll <laughs> change up. And I don't know how I keep those storylines together. But as soon as I read a couple sentences on the page, I... I immediately remember everything I previously read. So right now we're reading, one is a book tour opportunity I picked up, which is one of uh, Snows by Alyssa Cole. Mm -hmm. And she previously wrote When No One Was Watching. And that's a lot of, that's a book that a lot of people don't like, but I really liked it because it talked about gentrification, uh, the black community, communities they built back then how it's getting gentrified now it kind of brought that in perspective it did kind of get a little weird at the end but I don't know I enjoyed it I just like being you know surprised yeah right I don't like things that follow the same plot every time like that's boring um another book that I'm reading is The Good Ones Are Taken by Taj McCoy mm -hmm. she has other works I previously read a book by her that was named Zora Books Her Happily Ever After. Yeah. And it seems like triangles, love triangles are her thing. So uh, I'm kind of, I'm very interested in polyamory. Not that I'm in that. Yeah. I'm monogamous. But those books let me in on if I'm thinking what I'm getting from them is a little insight on how those things work. Not that they're all together, but dealing with multiple relationships at the same time is really interesting to me. Um, and the last book <laughs> is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, okay. and I have not started it yet. I'm supposed to be starting it today. Um, I listened to a little bit of audio, trying to figure out if I want to listen to it or just read it. Sounds good. I I can see why people are like, this is such a good fantasy. Like, I have the entire series. I'm ready to jump in. Nice. Okay, so wait. Now I have, like, so many follow-up questions. So for, um, yes, I did read um, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. And I, I am one of those mixed people. Like, I got where she was going with the story. I felt mm -hmm. like she... Like the romance ish kind of thing. I was just kind of like, this isn't why I'm here. Like, and I know though, or I know now, I didn't know at the time that she is a historical romance author, 
like that, mm-hmm. like her first like genre. So it kind of made sense why, you know, there was a romance in there. I loved the ending that like, if I could have had more of like that last 175 to 100 pages, I probably would be singing a different tune because I love like just how things just switched and we're going full speed ahead. I loved it. Um, so are you, you're reading, you said you're reading her new one? Yeah, I'm reading okay. her new one. It comes out on Tuesday. Okay. How is that so, one so far? Are you feeling same vibes? It's the same, like, same vibes. Same vibes. Okay. <laughs> like, it's not the same, but you're definitely like, what the hell is going on here? Like, <laughs> okay. And I don't know. I'm finding this year that I like being confused. Yeah. Like, I like not knowing what's going on until the end. Mm-hmm. I like the suspense. Um, so right now the main character has dissociative identity disorder. So we're dealing, we're introduced at the beginning to all her personalities, which I love. She, I said, don't wait. You don't got to introduce them throughout the whole book. Right. Give it to me now. I think she did a good job of doing that. I'm only on chapter eight, but, um, we're in, we're full speed ahead. Introduce, they're talking to each other. She's going to some creepy island. She does it. She just, she wasn't fronting. So fronting is when that personality is presenting. Mm-hmm. And for six years, she wasn't fronting. And the body went through the pandemic. Whoever was fronting mm-hmm. at the time got to go through that. She's wondering why she has a bag full of Lysol wipes. Wow. Hand sanitizers or masks. And I actually was thinking about that recently. How people were in comas. Like, how did people just wake up? This is what's going on. My doctor got a mask on now. Like, what's good? <laughs> I think what brought that into my mind was the solar eclipse. Because here mm. in um, Ohio, we got we didn't get full totality, but it got dark. Like, it was nighttime. And I was like, imagine if you went to sleep in this and you woke up and it was dark. <laughs> That's a little off topic, but that all ties back into different reading experiences, bring up different, yeah. tap into those thought processes, yeah. you know, that go far behind, but beyond the words of, on the page. Right, right. Okay, so I didn't know that, I knew she had a new book coming out, I didn't know what it was about, but that, just that alone, that may have just sold me on checking it out, because that sounds like a very interesting concept outside of like Sybil which I've never like read Sybil I've seen the movie with um oh Sally Sally Field um and then I don't know if you've seen like Split with I can't even think of his name but it was a movie a while ago um Split with a British um actor and basically it's it's his different personalities and one of his personalities kidnaps a girl and so like yeah, it's it's going through all of that. So like those are the but I love stuff like that because you never know like when when the personality like you said is gonna come to the front. So oh my god, I did watch this movie. I forgot about this. Yes, I've I've watched a lot of um, movies like this. Now that I'm reading this, I'm realizing that like there's a movie with Halle Berry and it's called Frankie and Alice, and she oh. also has a personality disorder. I'm really intrigued now. So I'm definitely going to add that. Um, The next one that you mentioned, I did read Zora books, her happily ever after. I'm not a love triangle person out. I think I can deal with a lot when it's fantasy, like in a fantasy, it's like, eh, whatever. But when it gets to real people, it's just kind of like, this is awkward. (laughs) How is this going to work? So I think Taj did a really, really good job. I was interested. I didn't want to DNF the book at any point, but it's interesting that her next book kind of deals with it too. So I'm going to wait to see your review on it before I decide. <laughs> if I'm let's gonna let's into keep it. in mind, um, I liked Zora books or Happy Ever After, but I did it and I'm glad I wrote a review for it so I can refresh my mind of why I didn't. It was a lot of the granny in the book saying, oh, when are you going to make me some grandba- uh, grandbabies? And she was just very involved yeah. with her sex life. And I thought that's when it started getting awkward. Um, like, <laughs> listen, I am i don't want my grandma ask me that. I don't want to see your grandma ask you that. <laughs> so yeah, and then also, I didn't like any of the men. 
<laughs> we didn't like any either. I had no, a clear I didn't favorite. Like either of them. And so we won't go into spoilers, guys. Don't worry. But I had a clear favorite in that book. And I was hoping, you know, I was hoping. And I'll just leave it at that. But you didn't like uh-huh. either of them. No, mm-hmm. I actually said in my review, I wish the author would have di- different route and had her realize, oh, I don't need neither of these men. Because she had self confidence issues, True. so I wanted her to tap into that. Because when you sell something as plus size rep mm-hmm. or fat rep, I want you to tap into you know what everybody is thinking. She's in her head. If you're making it seem like she's in her head about her weight, tap into that at the end. Like, mm-hmm. and Zora finally got her happily ever after mm-hmm. because she realized all she needed to have is herself. Mm-hmm. Like. I would just, mm. that's what I wish. You know, authors aren't always going to do that, but it's okay. I like- so we're going into it knowing that I didn't really, I was like, so-so on the last book. We're going to see what this one does. So. Okay. Okay. So what was it, knowing that you were so-so on the last one, what was it that made you interested in this one? Is it just because it was Taj and you wanted to give her another chance or you just happened to get the arc and was like, sure, let's see. I always give people second chances. Mm. I don't write anyone off unless I literally hated the book. I've written. I'm not going to lie. I've written the people off. Um, But second chances are my thing. Like, I just read The Love Song for Ricky Wilde, Mm -hmm. and I didn't like The Perfect Fine. So, Mm -hmm. and I really loved A Love Song for Ricky Wilde. So, I was like, I got to give these books a second chance. Forget my thousand book TBR. I'm going to read I'm going to read another book. <laughs> like, we have to at least give them one more chance. Maybe a third. It really depends. But I, I, that's the reason why I decided to choose this. Okay. Okay. Curious. Okay. And then, again, I'll come back to you to see your review on Black Sun. Because that's been on my list for a while. I do not need to be diving into another fantasy at this point in time. Because I have stacks of completed fantasy works on my TBR cart that I need to read. <laughs> But that one is on my list. So I'm interested to see, yeah, what you think about that. Okay, so kind of moving more into the topic of today about emotional reads and kind of, you know, along those lines, what makes something, I guess, maybe if you can kind of, what does that mean to you? If you're going into a book that maybe will or won't make you emotional, I feel like people hear that and they're like, oh, I'm just going to cry. You know, I don't want to cry or, you know, oh, it's a tearjerker and it's going to, you know, maybe it's trauma porn or something like that. When you think of an emotional book or a book that is going to make you emotional, what does that mean to you? A book that's made me emotional, like the author has fired off all cylinders for this reader. Like they really probably made me love that book because they pulled that emotional tug and I feel like I'm a G. I don't cry. I haven't cried over a book, but I have gotten close. So when you make me feel all these emotions, I'm feeling adrenaline, like everything's going at the same time. I'm mad, sad, happy, surprised. Like all those things that makes the reading experience even more enjoyable and pleasurable. Right. Right. So I like, you know, you kind of, you kind of hinted at it. So emotional doesn't have to mean crying, right? Emotional Mm -hmm. can be, like you said, like suspenseful, like you're reading a book and you literally have like a doom and anxiety about what could potentially happen. So you think it, it, it covers everything. It's not just the crying. Yeah, it's not just the crying. We're getting <clears throat> we're getting angry. We're getting happy. We're getting excited. We're confused. As I said before, <laughs> we're all those emotions. If I put an emotional chart <laughs> for these books, I'm circling multiple. I'm not just one emotion the entire book. It's not always one note, um, which I really love when those books have that emotional connection. And of course, I'm not always looking for those when I'm going in a book, like, I really want something that's going to make me get riled up. Like, I'm not looking for that. If it happens, it happens. Now, if I am in the mood for, oh, what's a book that's going to get me in my feelings? Then I pull from the either recommendations or my own, like, I know this book is going to get me there. Okay. Does that affect your rating? Like, the emotion? Like, can you read a good book? 
um, that doesn't give you, you know, that wide range of emotions and still be a five star? Or do you think like a lot of the five star reads are the ones that really pulled me into the story and gave me like these wide range of emotions? That's a good question. I was going to say no, (laughs) but now that I'm thinking, I'm like, hmm, my five star reads, what is one that isn't emotionally tied? (laughs) I feel like I give five stars if I've at least experienced two different emotions throughout the book. Mm -hmm. There's other factors of what makes a five star. People have been wondering what makes a five star book to me. I do not have the answer. If it calls upon me to claim it as five stars, I will. But I'll tell you this. Every book starts five star. Page one, it's like a tip. Your waitress starts doing stuff that you don't like. You're noticing it's those those change that change is going down (laughs) and by the end of the book or the end of the the service i now have my rating i don't have a really here is why brie rated this five stars for anyone right now okay okay something to think about okay yeah just curious into you know in terms of what makes that for for me it's if i had a good time and i i definitely don't think all of my five stars are equal you know i've read some middle grade books that are Five star Amari and the Night Brothers, five star read, but I can't compare that to like an NK Jemison because it's, you know, totally different on the writing style. But both of them, I had a really fun time and there wasn't anything like that I wanted more out of it that was missing, you know, that I wish it would have happened. Um, so I was just curious, you know, in terms of emotion, like, I don't know. I think some books have definitely made me more emotional than others. And some, it was just like, this was a good time. No, for sure. For sure. There's some where I'm like, I have no choice but to rate this I saw. Yeah. If I don't, it's a disjustice to the writing. Um, or I'll be like, oh, that was a good time. It kept me, like, I kept turning the pages, five star. So I think there's definitely, like, those times where you're, like, very critical of your five stars. Or there'd be times where you're just like, you yeah, give that five star because... I made it through and I had a good time. Right. Have there, have you ever read something where like it's giving you emotion and it's giving you emotion that you, you know, like anger. I don't think anger necessarily is a bad emotion to feel in books when you're connecting with the character, but has that ever done like a disservice to the book? Like, have you figured where it was like, I, you know, I thought I was going to like the way that this was going And I don't like the way that you're using anger or whatever the emotion is in this book. And now it's dragging it down. Definitely. Like even I find myself when I read romance, I'm either mad at the female main character or the male main character. So when you evoke that emotion, I'm not, I'm not sure if the author wants me to be angry, but now I'm mad. There's red flags going on. There's age gap going on. Let's say, <laughs> throw that in there. I'm I'm putting down the. I'm not. I'm not continuing. And it's a good thing that you said in the beginning of what you were saying about anger. It's not always meant to be a bad thing. And I was going to hit on this: how ang- being angry at a book could lead you to so many different avenues. You could end up being so angry that you end up having a discussion with your best book friend about this book and how y'all both were angry about the book and now you feel validated you feel happy like somebody seeing my point or it leads you to find other books centered around that topic to where you either enjoy that book or you have more knowledge on that topic so I feel like being angry isn't like oh I don't want to be angry I want to be every emotion like when I'm reading right right (laughs) do you have a favorite like emotion I guess um that you like love to like either feel or tap into like I know sometimes you know people will see people crying with books and they're like oh you know I want to feel that and I feel like every time we talk about emotion like it's it's two ends of the spectrum it's either you're angry or you're crying and there's so many different Mm -hmm. things in between but out of the list of emotions do you have something where you just you actually love to go into a book and either have it surprise you or it meets your expectation with like a certain emotion? Um, confusion. I am a person who asks as many questions. Um, so it really, it's like a mind game for me when I'm reading this and I'm confused. I'm enjoying it. I'm never like irritated or, oh, I wish she would just stop confusing. 
me and let me find out what's going on. Um, it's very enjoyable. And of course, being happy about a book, mm-hmm. you don't want you want to be happy. Everybody wants to be happy in life. That's like a secondary. I feel like I'm happy when I'm confused. So. <laughs> do you talk back to your books? Just curious. Yes. You do? Yeah. Yes. If anybody's seen my book reactions on my stories, yeah, I, that is exactly what I said in that moment. So, yeah, we talked to the books. I don't throw the books. That's the thing some people do. You know, I've slapped a book a couple times. I don't throw books either, oh, yeah. but there have been books yeah. where I'm like, if I didn't, if I wouldn't have spent this precious money on this beautiful hard copy, I would have chucked this across the room. I know Next of Kin, the ending was trash to me. Uh, so I definitely wanted to chuck that, but I only, I was reading it through audio. So I got to chuck my head. Yeah. And then what kind of things like automatically draw your attention, whether you see it in a blurb with a book or, you know, one of your bookstagram friends is, has posted a review. Like what's something that kind of makes you go, huh, that could potentially be interesting. If it's something with multiple POVs, if it's something with found family, um, if it says set in Da, 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 years ago I'm definitely like okay now you got my attention where are we going with this um in the same thing I'm gonna say stuff that turns me off mm-hmm. if it has to do with police brutality mm-hmm. no if it has to deal with age gap no if it has to deal with the civil war I'm not I'm not really into that mm-hmm. history no um unless it's like a black community you know the civil war happened over there but this is what's going on here. I don't know if I've read anything Civil War, but I feel the same way about World War Two. Like, I see so many, like... Any of the World Wars. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Another one. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. Okay, unless it's something like, you know, historical, where it's a story that hasn't been told from the Black perspective, the Native perspective, the Mexican perspective. Like, okay, now you might have me, but if it's if it's just the general war story like i don't need i can't speak for everyone i don't need any more of those i don't need any more of them either and the reason why is because we've already been taught that in school yes i don't need to read it um i mean people do have the same opinion about slavery but i don't know there's just so much not known about yes black history that i'm like yeah give me every story about slavery through jim crow yes and i think and yes, I agree. It's it's different. Like we can't compare that on the same spectrum. And I think even more so, like you're saying, we're taught the wars in schools, but we're very rarely taught outside of Black History Month about the enslaved experience, about what happened. There's, and there's still so much that we don't know, right? About families being separated and just different things and how they've happened. And I feel like for so long, those stories were being told by not us, by, by authors mm-hmm. who were not us. Um, and so as they're coming about more and more, so like I read, I remember I read The Underground, or maybe it's just Underground by Colson Whitehead. Mm -hmm. which talks about the Underground Railroad. And then I read, like, right after that, I read The Water Dancer from Tanashi Coates. And both of those had to do with escaping slavery. And even though, yes, it is a heavy topic, it can absolutely invoke some, some very strong emotions. I was just so dialed in because I wanted more of this story. I want more Mm -hmm. of seeing people take their life into their own hand and trying to do what they can to escape these situations. I wanted to see, you know, uh, you know, other people helping them on their journeys. And I can go on, on and on about that, but I do, I think that that is different, but I also think that is another emotion that a lot of people try to stray away from because they feel like it's heavy or it's trauma. And I absolutely, you know, I'm not disagreeing with that, but those books are also so good. Like underground from Colson Whitehead was just such a phenomenal piece. Yeah. I even, cause half of my recommendations are historical fiction. Mm-hmm. So when I'm thinking about what people say, Oh, that's sad. Cause there's slavery mentioned and there's beating. I'm just like, I kind of channel it to like, it's happened. Um, 
I want to reclaim like my history. I want to, if somebody's bringing up slavery, I can tell them, well, there's a story about such and such from this plantation that she decided to leave once they were free from the Emancipation Proclamation. And they have a, a land that nobody's talking about. This mm-hmm. unsung story mm-hmm. of a community of black people who branched out on their own, even though they were scared. And they now have a community where they lean on each other for those talents and they're flourishing. That's the American Queen by Vanessa Miller. Ooh. Oh, oh, I have that one on my list. Great starter for people who want to get into historical fiction. Okay. But yeah, I feel like there are those, sad to say, happy slave stories. Mm-hmm. They were enslaved. We now have to get to a point of where they're not. If you, if that's your thing, just reading present wise or just a little, maybe 10 years ago, that's your thing. I want to know how people thought throughout time. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think even going back into Native Americans, mm-hmm. what did they think? Mm-hmm. What did the, what was in their mind when these white people came randomly one day and just was like, this is mine now. I don't like what you're doing here. I'm going to start some new shit in here, <laughs> around here. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. I think, I think histor- history has a lot to say, a lot of emotions it can evoke, but if you channel those in a way of I'm receiving new knowledge and it's not that I need to go attack the next white person I see, mm-hmm. I just know how to move forward with white people mm-hmm. in that way. Like, mm-hmm. I know what you've done, you may repeat it because you have. Right. It's just history has shown. Mm-hmm. But I know now how to approach a situation with you because you've done it time and time and again. Right. Have you read, um, as you're as you're talking about that, Yellow Wife by Sadiqa Johnson? Have you read that one? I love Sadiqa. Yeah. I love Sadiqa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is so good. Such um, a good book. So for our listeners out there, if you're unfamiliar with this specific book, it follows the story um, of an enslaved woman who finds herself um, off of the plantation that she grew up in. Everything that she knows, she's no longer there. And she is living um, at this jail called the Devil's Half Acre. And the um, head jailer, I guess, decides to, to take her as his mistress and what happens with that and like the whole I guess society that's kind of built around um these very fair skin black women and the kind of the situation she finds herself in as his mistress like of course you know being forced as his mistress having some ish kind of freedoms to do stuff, but then also like still trying to help her people. And the reason I mentioned, I bring that one up specifically for this episode is because as I'm reading it and once I got to the end to find out that the devil's half acre it, is a real place in Virginia, yeah. um, that it was a real, you know, jail for enslaved people. And then that this character Phoebe in the book is a real person. And so like the rabbit hole (laughs) that I went down after reading that book. And just like you said, like there's so much of our history that was like, I didn't know that this was a thing that these men, that these white men did because no, Mm -hmm. you know, self-respecting white man was going to let their daughter marry a jailer who was over, you know, this kind of work. Mm -hmm. Um, So they would claim you know, black women as their mistresses. And it was just so interesting and heartbreaking, but also uplifting. And I just didn't know how Mm -hmm. to feel by the end of it because it was, it was great. That just brought up emotion of how I felt when, what was his name? Her, her romantic interest. Not that it's romance, but his name. And then her son was there. No, we mean, why? That's the type of stuff where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in this story. I can see myself in this story watching this all play out like Sadiqa, Miss Sadiqa Johnson. We're never not going to say she's not going to set the scene, the time period, like the verbiage that's you. She does heavy research Mm -hmm. and I can't wait to meet her one day. But um, that's the type of stuff where you said it 
you've led up to this. I didn't know it was coming. Yeah. But now I'm like, ah, like, like it's somebody I know. Like, yes. you don't know these people. Yeah. And one of the things that I liked about what she did, and it's been a real, it's been a long time since I've read Underground. So I'm pretty sure it was, it, you know, he, he treaded this line lightly as well. But one of the things that I noticed about her is we kind of know, right, what's happening. Like, we know she's being forced. We know she's having kids. Like, she didn't volunteer to, like, be with this man. Um, but it's not on page. And I really mm-hmm. appreciate that because there have been books and or movies where I just, I have to tap out because it's, that is the trauma that I know is happening, but I don't need, I don't want to always read that on page or mm-hmm. see it on film. And I think she did such a good job with closing the door with, you know, dropping a nod to us and then closing the door. And then the story's picking up a day or so later. Like we know what just happened, but I mm-hmm. didn't have to, I, I experienced it. My emotion is still there, but I didn't have to walk through it with her in that moment, with the character in that moment. And I really appreciated that. Yeah, I can agree with that. I can definitely agree. With, some things don't need to be on the page. Now there are some things where I'm like, this is necessary for the plot to move, but those scenes weren't because that is not what the book was about. Right. So. Right. We've kind of jumped around. I know a lot of people who actively avoid reading emotionally charged books. Um, and like I said, like I think I think something like Yellow Wife or even like Take My Hand um, by Dolene Perkins, they're hard to really sum up because yes, they are emotional reads, but they're also fantastic reads. I have I find that I have a hard time convincing some of my reader friends to jump outside of their bubble and to pick up books like this that are so good but they just they don't want to be emotional. They want to, you know, stick in their in the fantasy box and they just want to be there and leave it at that. What do you tell people or what can you tell people who maybe want to experience some of these stories in the wide array of emotions, but they're scared because they're not sure that they, that they know what emotion they're going to feel or yeah, they're not, they're just not sure. They're so uncertain and they don't want to go into a book and be triggered. I think that's probably a lot of people's pushback on this is they don't want to go in. They don't want to be sad. They don't want to be depressed. Um, what, what do you say to someone like that to try and convince them, like, no, these books deserve to be picked up? I'm a person who says all books aren't for everyone, Hmm. but if I had to convince somebody to read some of my favorite books, I'm just going to tell you, take away the emotions and just focus on what the author is giving you the story. Like, yes, it's an emotional story. It's going, I'm going to tell you, it's going to make you cry probably, but you're going to have a good time. Like if it's coming for me, you know, (laughs) I'm going to give you that good wreck. (laughs) It's not going to be just some crazy, like, oh, I've had a horrible time now. There have been people I've recommended books or I've said I've read it and they're like, they tie me to, they now know, okay, if Bree's recommending a book, it's going to be emotional. Wouldn't you rather be emotionally tied to her book than just saying, oh yeah, that was good. It was good for what it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's nothing memorable about that book. It's just a book over there. This book over here. Oh, I remember when this such and such thing happened, that's that's this is how I felt and you're reliving those emotions just like how before I was like oh I remember like it's good it's good an emotional story is very good and I feel like if you experience no emotions throughout the day which is unbelievable but if you haven't had a strong pull to an emotion throughout your entire day and you open a book and it gives you just a feeling just you're feeling something I feel like that helps you be alive like it, it's extending my lifespan i feel like where's the study i don't know but i'm pretty sure there there are some studies of reading increases your lifespan like, yes. for sure yes i like what you said um emotionally connected is that the way that mm-hmm. you put it to a story emotionally tied emotionally tied 
to a story versus just being emotion like generally emotional. So I think mm-hmm. I I think now hearing you say that that they are two different things. You're just going into this, you know, I don't know, seeking emotion, but you're you're being tied to the story. Like the point isn't to go into this to, you know, make you an emotional wreck. The point to go into it is to have that emotional connection to mm-hmm. the story. And like, you know, like like you said and and we'll talk about this um here next, but just remembering those characters, it's almost like now the characters in the story have become a part of you. They become yes. real. You're connected to them. And when I saw you mention all the lonely people, I got so excited because I I don't know anyone else who has read this book. I heard about the book on a on a podcast currently reading. And other than the host that brought that book, I had never heard of anyone talk about it. So I went out, I bought it. And oh my gosh, I just, I I was so emotional in a good way. I was happy. I was sad. I was crying. I probably have tear stains in the book. And to this day, that book is one of my favorite stories just because I remember Hubert, the main character. I remember him and seeing him I'm seeing him as you know my older frail you know before my grandfather passed I'm seeing it as him and I'm just it it just it made me happy and it just made me all of the things so tell us in a non-spoiler way your thoughts about all the lonely people and why you liked this book let's let's go ahead this is hubert we're meeting our old black friend (laughs) um i think what introduced me to this book was i was seeing all over bookstagram so i was like okay i'll keep that on my radar and if it comes up that i can get the opportunity to read it i'll read it um i ended up doing a buddy read with a couple ladies on bookstagram and we had a time with this um it opens up with him just trying to remember things and I just it brings me back to the game I don't this is so random but football players with CTE they end up having those head injuries and there was a white guy that Melanie was delivering a basket to and he had to have everything written down so it was reminding me of stuff like that once again books evoking a memory or thought that transcends the pages but um he was just so frail and decrepit Hubert you got my heart like I feel like this book was the start of me realizing I really love books with old people in it I wouldn't say I'm like the type to you know go to a nursing home on a Saturday in real life but I'm definitely kicking with Hubert any day of the week Mike the way he writes is just I don't even know who I didn't even expect the twist at the end because there's a twist guys there is a twist to this book and I'm like it all makes sense I'm you know that cloud of confusion we kind of it was lingering in the back now it's all full circle once we finish the book and I just love meeting his like found family he met in the book how he lived out his best days of his life I I really enjoyed you know learning about all the lonely people and how they weren't lonely in the end. So this book came out, you know, while I think a lot of people were realizing that they were lonely and, Mm -hmm. you know, the height of the pandemic, we're separated. We can't be with people, which may have made this an even more emotional read because it's like someone's grandfather, parents, sister, brother, my dad, you know, is a, across town and like on lockdown like the farthest I could go to drop off some food to him was his door it was like Mm -hmm. I you know you're not coming in because I don't know what I have because I've been to the store like we're this is how we're going to protect each other especially in those early days when we had no idea what was going on and then to read a story like this and like you said to see him find his family so really quick guys for those who are unfamiliar basically we're following an older black man Um, He has flashbacks through his life of past and present. And um, 
he basically has been lying to his daughter to tell her that he has friends, that he's okay, she's off living her life, you don't have to be here, I have friends. And so he makes up all of these imaginary people who are his friends and then his daughter is coming to visit and she can't wait to meet all of his friends. And so now mm -hmm. our main character, Hubert, is on a race to find real friends to have to introduce to his daughter. And the story kind of goes from there. But we find out about him, about his background, his, you know, his marriage, raising kids, difficulties of being a immigrant in the UK and like everything that's going on. And like you said, yeah, like he, this found family element where lonely people come together and band together to not be lonely anymore and to, and to serve as each other's friend and support group. And it was just great. It's, it's such a just, I don't want to say it's a comfort read, because when I think of my comfort reads, I'm like, mm, but this is comforting. Yeah. It's a comfort read for people who want to learn about people. Yeah. Like, I just, that's special. That's a special one right there. Yes. Yes. I agree. Now, okay. And then we talked about this before we started recording. What about All My Rage by Saba Tahir? That is a very oh emotional book. It it's an e but it's emotions on a different scale, right? So like mm -hmm. all the lonely people, I just wanted to hug everybody in the book. I just wanted to wrap them in my arms and like cry with them and celebrate with them when they were having moments. All My Rage, I wanted to do that a little bit, but I also wanted to fight some people. Yeah, um, I, I definitely want to fight some people. <laughs> So, um, what do you think about that one? All of those two kids, and I don't know. I think I'm a sucker for Sal and Nor. Old people and children. What, Sal and Nor, yes. So, Sal's the guy and Nor's the girl, right? Yes. And everything is happening to them. I just feel like they were kept in a box, but life happened to them. Like... They try, they try to keep them boxed in, but life happened. And that's what I'm talking about. I like reading people's lives because everybody is so different. And the way you evolve in your life based on your experiences is really interesting to me. But um, the, the rage I felt for the things that were happening to those two, because I'm, I'm just, I feel like the author threw us in, like from immediate page one, I was in the story and I'm like, wait. What's happening? Who's Sal? Who's North? Who's Mensa? Who's like, I'm like, oh, why are they doing this to these children? What did the kids do? Like, so the questioning of why a lot with that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was good. It was, and, and guys, you don't really need to read. If you're going to pick this one up, just take our word for it, that it's a great book. You don't really need to read too much of the synopsis. We're following two teenagers in their senior year who have been each other's friends and halfway family for their entire lives. And they had an argument and they're not too friendly at the moment, but they're still in each other's lives. And it kind of goes from there. And Oh, yes. I think rage is like, you know, you go into a book, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. But no, Saba Tahir did a great and just her in general, like, you know, I'm I'm finishing up her Ember in the Ashes series. Um, she just knows how to pull everything out of you. She knows how to break your heart while also making you hopeful and you know, shedding a little bit of light, but also teaching you a really tough lesson. And she's just such a great author. Some things you already know is going to happen with the book. And I, I knew, I knew, but I didn't want, yeah. I didn't want that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't so, want that. I didn't yeah. want, um, there's a situation that kind of rips, like, mm -hmm, there's a situation <laughs> <laughs> that happens halfway, you know, through the book that puts, their friendship to the test again. And I it, I was just so sad because I was just like, oh God, not this. Like, not, not this. Not yeah. this. That's the type of stuff we yeah. love. <laughs> and it's just like, you're, you know, you're rooting for these two kids and you want them to make it and you want them to be exceptional, but then also remembering like they are kids. 
and they are going to mess up and they are going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when they made their, you know, some of the mistakes throughout multiple mistakes throughout the book, I just wanted to be the one there to be like, it's okay. Like here, do you need a hug? Like, (laughs) just come on over. Just come on over here for a second. It's okay. You don't gotta deal with that environment anymore. Yes, we're gonna figure it out. We are gonna figure it out. Um, So yes, I, I loved, I loved, loved, loved those two. So anyone who's out there who's like, I hear you guys gushing about these books. They sound like a fun time, but also I'm still not sold. Like, Mm. what would you tell them if they're hesitant to pick something, if they're hesitant to pick either of these up that we just kind of discussed? Okay. So I had some prepared for this because I'm going to sell this book to you. All the lovely people I'm just going to say is a book about a man who's surrounded by community for the last best days of his life. I mean... Just think of your grandpa, your grandma, who you want to spend time with, who you wish you spent more time with, Mm -hmm. that's still here. You get to live out that in this book with a really cool old person. I don't don't know what much more to say. You get the community. You get the emotion. You get the, the found family. You get the letters. You get the calls between him and his um daughter. You get a twist. I think that's what's really selling it for me. The emotion plus a twist, you're not expecting that. If you picked up this book on the shelf and just were like, oh, I want to read this. It's about an old person. This is how it's going to go in my head. No. Mike is going to be like, you thought, let's go ahead and go this direction. So I really think that's what's going to sell this one for me. Yes. I think there are a couple of twists. I think there, (laughs) there, there are a couple of twists in there where I was like, just jaw on the floor like because I'm so into the story and then like we just veer and I was like wait what like like guys it's so it will move you in ways and then I think also like in that moment I was just like oh protect our elder you know our elder population like I I hope Mm -hmm. someone out there you know, who reads this and still has grandparents because I don't have either of mine anymore, just remembers to love on them and give them a hug and be patient with them. And, you know, as they're getting older and set in their ways and cranky and like it just it really I felt the love that was poured into that book um, on these fictional characters. And it was just it was phenomenal. I agree. I take a chance on it. The the summary of Jay and us selling this book is telling you guys to call your grandparents yeah. <laughs> or somebody you love at the end of this episode. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Just just give them a call. Closing out here, do you have another couple of recommendations of books that you think like maybe people need to give another chance and just because they're going to make them emotional doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means that you were going to fall in love with the characters that you're reading. Um, I feel like not a lot of people talk about my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time, Hurricane Summers, YA novel by Asha Ashanti Brumfield, and it's her debut, and I just feel like it's the best debut I've ever read. Um, very emotional, coming of age story, I feel like a lot of people can relate, I did a huge reread for it last year, every, a lot of people loved it, I don't think there was one person that didn't, either they just didn't read it all the way through with us or maybe it wasn't for them but I didn't know I just really feel like people need to read this like support her I've seen that book around and I have not picked it up yet that's beautiful it it is so good it's so good it's gonna make you angry because Tilla's teenager she's not promiscuous promiscuous but she runs into some situations where it's testing testing you know what she, what she's going to choose as a, a child of Jamaican parents and she's visiting this country for the first time she's like okay yeah maybe I've been here when I was younger but I don't know this world mm-hmm. I don't know how to be the, here I'm from Canada I really think the emotional pull the grieving I did there's death 
let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. The emotions that I read throughout the book, thinking about her dad, her sis, her little sister, her mean aunties. Oh, they were so mean and so naive it, within themselves. So it's very, that was a very good one. Another one, you know, a lot of people don't like this one. <laughs> they don't like it. But bless her heart, bless her soul, R.I.P. Tracy Brown, she knows how to write. What? No. She knew how to write. Wait, which one is that? So this is Hold You Down by Tracy Brown. It's not a part of a series. It's just a standalone. Um, and it's basically set in the 80s to the early 90s with two sisters and what they go through growing up in Harlem. Growing up in Harlem in the 80s okay. and how two different two different lives happening but shared together. Mm-hmm. And it's not... It's not going to be a happy ending. I'm going to tell you. Mm. It's, it's a very sad book. But I just feel like this is one of those ones that I was emotionally connected to. I wanted I wanted the best outcome for the characters. And in the end, it didn't happen for me. But I'm not let down by the book because of that. I'm invigorated to read more mm-hmm. because of it. Um, and then the last one is... Everybody's scared of this. So <laughs> I don't expect everybody to read it, but it's long. It reads quick to me. And I definitely, if you could tell, I have a lot of tabs. To say. That's, um, yes, uh, yeah, that's that, that, that one has intimidated me. A love song for W.E.B. Du Bois is, it's intimidating. That is, that, what, how yeah. many pages is that? What is that, like a six, seven hundred? So this one, the hardback is eight hundred is seven hundred ninety seven pages wow. itself. That's including the acknowledgments. I just it read like a three hundred page book. Did it? Now what? I, I swear it did. I don't think I've. Seen, what is that one actually about? Like I know it follows like a family or something, but I don't know that I know like what it actually is about. So this is one of those multi family sagas. The main character is named Ailey. But it spans from, like, before they got over to um, the U.S. They were in the grounds. They were Creek people, so they were Native American. Then they ended up mixing and mingling with the white people. It ended up being a black person after that. Um, It just follows a family as well as the same time Ailey's life she's experiencing in, I think it might have been the 90s, um, going into the 2000s and so basically you're learning those building blocks of foundations of why Ailey is the way she is from the past and I just think that Honoré did such a great job with this she's currently writing another book and I get so excited because her pen is good as well and I prior to this she was writing poetry I think Mm. so this was the first like actual work And maybe that's why it's so big. I need to obviously read more videos, listen to more videos about why she wrote this. Why is the title it is? Why she created these characters she did? But that's an amazing book. Nice. And I'm not invited. I don't tell anybody who's just now getting back into reading to jump into that. Mm -hmm. But if that's your preference, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the family tree. You're going to have to be thinking about a lot of characters at the same time, remembering those characters later on. But in the um, at the heart of the book is Ailey, her sisters, and her immediate family, and how she's going through from adolescence to college and adult life, what happens to her, and those shared experiences she has with her sisters, as well as tying back into that family tree. I think, I think... This is this is a really good book. I really want to read it again, to be honest. But who has time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a thirty-hour audio book. Oh my so that's gosh! Over a day long. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I finished it in a week. Oh my gosh! That that's that's long. Um, I listen to audio books fast, but that's still that still sounds really. long. It is a very long audio book. But you know, right. if you're with if you're with a, I mean, it's like reading a fantasy series, right? So if you're with a family mm-hmm. or a character for a long stretch of time like maybe it's worth it clearly you're you know you're raving about it it is worth it i think there's only like a handful of bad reviews and it's like this could have been a couple pages um shorter Mm. or it could have been what else have people said 
they've said they didn't like, that there was multiple POVs in there, or multiple characters, I should say, because there's only really one point of view. Um, it's not a lot about the content of the book. You know, there wasn't a lot. I feel like there wasn't a, any unnecessary. Everything was wrapped up in a nice bow at the end. I didn't need anything more. I didn't even need an epilogue. I don't even think that book has an epilogue. Mm. And it's very rare that I say a book doesn't need an epilogue. I need you to tie it up. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, with the length of that, it doesn't really need an extra. But, <laughs> yeah. I really enjoyed it. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, well, that kind of leads us into this last little round. I'm just going to rapid fire a couple of questions to you and you let us know which books come to mind? You ready? Okay. I think so. <laughs> the first one is The Last Book You Purchased. When I Think of You by Maya Ariel. Mm, nice. I hope you like that one. The Last Book You Got from the Library. Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. Okay. okay. Didn't read it. Had it for <laughs> months and didn't read didn't it. Read it. I don't know what it is. I feel like when I go to the library and check out books, yes, I'm thinking I'm going to read it. But then I don't. And it's just sitting. You're not the only one. Until they keep, until, until they're like, you got to return. Yeah. <laughs> it's my first to come back. Oh, okay. I was just about to read it. Um, <laughs> the last book you DNF. Heaven and the Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. Really? Barnes and Noble's book of the year. Oh. And I was buddy reading this with someone, which when I buddy read, it kind of, Either I'll keep going or I'll DNF with him. And I didn't necessarily have a big issue. Like, I could have probably kept reading until it picked up for me. But I was just like, I got so much stuff I want to read this month. I got to I gotta just let it go. So, it's not that it was a bad book. I just, at the time, I think I was getting in a slump from the other two books I DNF. So, I was like, I don't know. Go. We got to jump into something real quick before it's all bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, James McBride used to be one of my favorite authors, but I haven't read this one yet. I read Deacon King Kong and I was kind of like, mm. uh, uh, I don't know. I, that one just wasn't for me. So I didn't jump into this one. I'm that, I'm sorry that didn't work out. A book that's been on your TBR for over a year. Skin of the Sea Ooh. by Natasha Bowen. Okay. I think I've been hesitant on reading this because it does have mixed reviews. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people talk about this, but I couldn't, you know, the cover, black person. Yeah. It's so yeah. So that's been on there for well, way past its time. <laughs> Understandable. What about a book that you hope to read within the next month? Black Sun. <laughs> <by her back. laughs> yes. And I think the third one's coming out soon, right? Or has it already come out? Yes. No, it comes out in June. A, a classic book that you loved. Their Eyes Are Watching God. As we can see, there's little taps. But um, that's a book that I read in eighth grade. And I really didn't pay too much attention to it. Because I'm like, oh, here, here we go. Reading another book. We read like eight books that year. But I was like, let me revisit this in my adulthood and see. I think this is one of my favorite books. Yeah. So when I read it, I read it with a group of people. And I just really fell in love with Zora's writing. It's not standard. It's very country, old black woman mm -hmm. writing this down in a book. But at the heart of this book is Janie's love story to herself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't interpret it like that. I think that this was her love story journey to herself. Because mm -hmm. she was married to three different men throughout the book. They didn't work out none of those marriages. And she ended up being alone at the end of it, but she wasn't upset. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I think this woman had a lot to say about women during that time. During the time, yeah. yeah. You know, I haven't read that one. I definitely, I have it on my shelf. I definitely do need to pick it up and, and read it. Listen to an audiobook. Here's a tip oh. for people. The verb she uses in the book is hard. It's not easy. Because if you're not used to talking like that, of course, I'm going to need some getting used to this. But what I did when I reread it was listen to it on audio. Mm -hmm. And it flowed very well because Ruby D, if people don't know, that's very famous movie star, voice actress, obviously. 
she narrates that and I feel like she does such a good job oh, that I fell in love with the story because of her. Okay, okay. I didn't know she narrated it. That's awesome. I love Ruby Dee. Mm-hmm. What about a book that you wish that you wish more people read? The Attic Child by Lola J. That is a book about two different people. One is a slave and he ends up in England and the other one is in present time and she they end up being connected. Their stories end up being connected. That's all I can say. But like if I talk any more about the book, <laughs> I won't spoil it. There's slavery mentioned, there's abuse mentioned in the book. But the way that author, just from a picture she saw in a museum, mm-hmm. she Googled the little information that was around about it and came up with the story. Oh, wow. I like, wow. off a picture, it sparked her to write this. Wow. So, yeah. I just, it's historical fiction, by the way. But, yeah, that's a really good book. A lot of people don't talk about it. Nice, nice, nice. What about a popular book that you did not enjoy? Uh, recently, Where Sleeping Girls Live by Farida Abi <laughs> Kay <laughs> That that's the new fake. release, isn't it? it? It is. It came out last month. Yeah, that just was very, very long. And I know I said I like being confused. I wasn't confused. Mm-hmm. I just was waiting for the ball to drop. Mm-hmm. So that's a different level of anticipation. Like you're building me up for something that ended up not even being a big reveal. I was like, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Why did it take me 70% for me to feel like I want to actually read the next chapter? Oh, wow. So that was one that I was like, ah. And then come to find out after I shared that opinion, a, a lot of people didn't like it. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay, okay. You know, did you like process. Ace of Spades? Uh, I, I liked, I finished both books, but... It's the same thing. So I don't think she's an author for me. Okay. The, the way she writes, mm-hmm. I don't enjoy it. So that's when you give that second chance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you realize, okay, I don't need to read from this person anymore because this is a consistent thing where I'm not enjoying the book. I'm finishing them and I'm not fulfilled. So, yeah, that was just one that I'm like, uh, the covers are nice, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, the covers are nice. Yes. Good to know. Thank you for that. And then the last one mm-hmm. is a book that you're excited to read soon. Did we already talk? I already asked you a book that you hope to read in the next month. So yeah, like, but I did have a different one. Okay, go for it. this. Uh, Black Girl, You Are Atlas by Renee Watson. Mm-hmm. That's a poetry collection uh, with fine art in it. I forget the person who did the fine art. I've just been hearing just a little bit about it, and I got it from a publisher, and the art really pulled me into where I want to try to read it because I don't read po- poetry often mm-hmm. often and I just don't know I just really excited to read that yeah. poetry just when you're listening to it it yeah. sounds good but reading it I've never really like oh yeah let's get into this poetry bag yeah it's a total different experience oh definitely you're gonna have to look out um for your thoughts on that one I'm I'm interested because I too I don't read a lot of poetry Well, that is all that I have. Do you have anything else that you want to leave with the listeners? Please make sure we know where we can find you um, online too. Um, You can find me at Bree is Booked on Instagram. I'm kind of on TikTok under the same um, (laughs) username. You can follow me there, but you're only going to see videos from December. So (laughs) it's uh, we might might get into our TikTok bag this year. I'm trying, you know get my feet wet with videos on instagram first then post them on tiktok um so you can find me at Bree's book on both platforms and i just hope that you enjoy what you see you know i'm very humble not looking for followers but if you choose to follow me i hope that you enjoy what you're seeing yes 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 everything will be linked in the show notes please go over and um support definitely yes give a follow you'll love sticking around in the content that you guys see and thanks so much for joining this has been fun we could talk books all day i didn't realize we had so many crossovers on some of the stuff that we've read so that's really exciting and i just appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with us 
Yes. I can't wait to connect with you more because I'm like, girl, we got to talk outside the recording. Yes. <laughs> There's so much to be said. And that's what I love about this bookstagram community that keeps me around. There's people to discuss because when I started this, it was just supposed to be a conversation with myself. And I followed my little pages, maybe a little publisher, maybe a big follower, like someone with big following, but nobody who I knew I was going to have personal connections with. Mm. And I feel like over the course of these one and a half years, I've been able to develop um, relationships, meeting up with people, planning to meet up with people when I go visit their cities, reading together monthly. Like, it's been a great, I love this community. The best side of the internet. I'm only here, you know, I came for the books, but I stick around for the community. That's the best the slogan there. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Well, that's all from us today. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye, y'all. Hey there. One last thing before you leave. Are you looking for a group to read and chat about books with? I'd love to invite you to join us on our current buddy read of The Color of Law a forgotten history of how our government segregated America by Richard Rothstein. We'll be having two virtual meetups to discuss this book. Our first discussion where we'll be covering the first half of the book will be on Sunday, June 23rd. All of the details, including the link to join our monthly book thread can be found on the Geneva app, which you can access by clicking the link in the show notes. Quick reminder, all books mentioned in this episode can also be found in the show note. Thanks so much for joining us on today's episode and wishing you a wonderful reading adventure until we meet again. Chat soon.